well, I made this short film, Two Cars, One Night, which did um, really, really well. And I got a lot of encouragement to keep writing other stuff and, and you know, obviously to think about a feature. And, and the short film already felt like part of something bigger, you know, possibly a feature. And so it was pretty easy for me to get back into the world and, and extend it. I think all up, like it's been five years since I wrote the first draft. I wrote the first draft in 2005, but then I took two years off to make Eagle vs. Shark and then came back to it in 2008 and we shot in 2009. So it took about two years to, to write it. Kia ora, my name is Boy, and welcome to my interesting world. My favourite person is Michael Jackson. Want to see some Michael Jackson dance moves? It was just a normal day at school and a lady came in and asked us if we wanted to audition for a feature film. Um, yeah, and a couple of our students put up our hands and yeah, it went on from there. I met Taika at the audition and I was casted as an extra. And then three days before shooting, I was casted as boy. The reason why I auditioned was because I just wanted to try it out. I just wanted to, yeah, just experience what it's like. I just wanted someone who um, had a, a kind of strong imagination and a, a nice innocence, you know, like so, someone who was like quite open to the world and open to everything around him and someone who wasn't like too cool, you know, like, the, the, the character really is, you know, this sort of hard done by a kid who has trouble at school, you know, he's trying to find his way in the world and he gets picked on and stuff. And while that might not be James's reality, he's open enough and is a good enough actor to be able to, you know, to be that vulnerable. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Thank you, boy. I'm named after my dad. He's overseas doing some pretty important stuff. I mean, you're a liar. Your dad's in jail for robbery. Well, I ended up casting myself about two months before we started. I was auditioning a lot of people up until then, and um, yeah, eventually it just, I don't know, it just made more sense for me to do it. I think I, you know, I was pretty hooked on getting a specific thing from the character and like it being performed a certain way and, you know, being funny and also like having a bit of vulnerability as well. Can you stop calling me dad? It sounds weird. I just think, you know, like having an antagonist father character who you've never met, it's just, too easy to just make him uh, just a bad guy who's you know, not very interesting to to watch on screen. So it's a perfect opportunity just to have fun and you know, make it entertaining and to bring the sort of fresh energy into the film. He can dance as good as Michael Jackson. He's a master carver, deep sea treasure diver, soldier, the captain of the rugby team, and he holds the record for punching out the most people with one hand. These kind of films are getting more and more popular now as well because people want a mix of things. They're, they're harder to market, but they're, they're way more satisfying to watch and I think they're far more resonant as well. I wanted to shoot in my hometown because that's you know, where I grew up and I'd set, you know, if I was going to write a film about kids growing up in the country, it was just the obvious setting. So it became kind of personal in that it was, yeah, I used a lot of locations and stuff that I know and, and people that I know and it was based a little bit on you know, certain characters that I knew growing up. For New Zealand, like the, the 80s were sort of like a time of innocence. You know, it's like a coming of age decade for us. Like we went through a lot of like social and political changes. As Māori, we were sort of slowly beginning to find ourselves and become proud of our own culture again. So it's like, yeah, it's, a, it's actually a really important decade in New Zealand's history. Um, far more important than 2000 to 2010. <laughs> Welcome to Meaty Boy. It's an invitation to my party. You get to dress as your favourite animal. Eagle vs Shark, if anyone was trying to describe it, I guess they'd say it was a romantic comedy, but it's not very romantic and often it's not, isn't, you know, just often some of the scenes aren't comedic at all, they're, you know, kind of depressing. And so, yeah, it's maybe that's just my approach or maybe the New Zealand approach or maybe the Australasian approach to a romantic comedy, you know, it's just mixing it up. And I think down these parts, we're, you know, from the vantage point of being outside of America and looking in yeah. and, you know, being able to, to judge quite harshly a lot of the stuff that comes out of there, you do want to, you know, a lot of the stuff that you do is 
you want to make like a kind of parody of of those films or you know you don't want to fall into the same traps and you know like the the cliches really well and you don't you know it just feels uncomfortable to to fall into those traps yeah the result of you know eagle versus shark was just a so almost a reaction against romantic comedies. And same with this, you know, it's just like a New Zealand slash South Pacific approach to the coming of age story. We started off um, exploring the rights thing and yeah, I mean, it was expensive, but we did, it, we did have it in the budget. So it was possible for us to, to use some of these classic songs. But actually in the edit, we realized that but we had some of these songs in the edit and stuff, and we realized that it just, it took away from a lot of what the film is about and like the kind of film it is. You can't have a really a tiny film set in the middle of nowhere and then suddenly, you know, kick in to beat it, you know, or, or Billie Jean. It's just, it's almost too much. It kind of dwarfs the film a bit too much, and I think it would pull the audience out. I think the audience would just go, how did you afford this? And like, you know, that's all I would be thinking about if I was watching it tiny independent film and you know suddenly thriller starts playing for the thriller like haka scene um we just got all the kids together and a friend of ours dolina she's a choreographer and she made up this dance and taught all the kids and yeah you know, they rehearsed for a couple of days and I think that particular thing is a fun thing to have at the end of the film. It's also a very Māori thing to do as well. Like, you know, like Māori just love singing and dancing and, and telling stories. You know, we come from an oral culture, so most of our history and stuff has always been told through spoken word and through song and through dance. Sweet. Thanks.